Man, King of the Hill is a dang good show, I tell you what. And it centers around the Hill family. You know, Hank, who everyone loves. Nobody rejects Timmy Gron! Well, I just did. Bobby, who everyone loves. And, um, Peggy. Die! 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 Who, yeah. Now, it's not that she's a poorly written character. If you ever marry a Spanish teacher, never doubt her enormous gifts. On the contrary, actually. She's a really well-written, unlikable character. And although I'd argue that Peggy is a dangle good person deep down on the inside, there are some, let's just say, questionable things that Peggy Hill has done throughout the series. They're not just gonna let their eggs sit there on the sidewalk. I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge, and these are the worst things that Peggy Hill has done. That's a clean burning hell, I tell you what. <laughs> A penny saved is a penny earned! Number 1. Sabotage We all know that Peggy is a mediocre Spanish substitute teacher, but is she okay with other subjects? If her skills in the former subject are any indicator, then most likely not. I mean, just look at the time that Peggy tried to teach sexual education. This is a diagram of a woman's v v v She's so repressed that she had a terrible time teaching her students about basic body parts that we all have. Half. No. Easy for some teachers to teach, but embarrassing for Peggy. Getting back to the subject at hand, in the episode Educating Lucky, Lucky asks Peggy for help. He asks her to help him get his GED by teaching him, but Peggy finds out Lucky is going to ask Luann's hand in marriage and tries to sabotage the wedding by making Lucky fail his GED. She doesn't like the idea of Lucky and Luann being together because Peggy thinks Luann could do better. I purposely taught him the wrong information. Peggy's plan to sabotage ruins Lucky's code of honor. In my family, we live by a code. And in his mind, if he can't pass his GED and better himself, he can't marry the pregnant Luann. When Lucky tells Luann that he can't marry her, Luann cries her eyes out, and for the rest of the episode, their relationship is rocky. Without my GED, I ain't good enough to marry you. Peggy not only sabotaged Lucky's chance of getting a GED, she almost destroyed a relationship because she can't handle the idea of a hillbilly weighing Luann down with a horrible future, of no job prospects, unruly kids, and a shack. Apparently, Peggy knows what's best for her niece better than Luann does. Controlling much? After Lucky says no to Luann about marriage, Hank finds out from Lucky that his family all had a code of honor, but they never succeeded in accomplishing their tasks, such as learning French or becoming the heavyweight champion of the world. Hank asks Lucky, then how the heck did any of them get married? Then how the heck did any of them get married? And Lucky reveals to Hank that they all had shotgun weddings. So Hank forces Lucky to marry Luann via shotgun wedding proposal. In the end, Luann and Lucky's relationship was mended, but you know what? I wouldn't trust Peggy when it comes to family issues ever again after that episode. Number two, jealous of her son. Another example of Peggy's unpleasant demeanor would be during the episode Goodbye Normal Jeans. Bobby Hill takes up home economics and learns how to cook. And he's so good at cooking that he volunteers to cook Thanksgiving dinner. Instead of praising Bobby for his love and interest in cooking, sewing, doing laundry, and vacuuming, Peggy gives Bobby the cold shoulder. Yes, Bobby, I can handle the heat. So get out of my kitchen. Not only is Peggy mad at Bobby, she gets mad at her husband for enjoying Bobby's newfound talents and life skills. Peggy is jealous of Bobby and thinks that if Bobby can do all the things that she can, why does her husband need her at all? She seems threatened by Bobby and ends up sabotaging the turkey dinner. She steals the turkey and tries to give it to her hairdresser because she thinks he's more deserving of a Thanksgiving meal with company. But to her surprise, her hairdresser isn't lonely and isn't gay, he has a wife. While she was on her way to her hairdresser's place, she drops the turkey and it's ruined with dirt and grime. And she still tries to pass it off as a good meal. I would rather share it with a man who needs me. Watching a disheveled Peggy clutch a turkey while riding a bicycle is really something else. And this episode totally highlights her pettiness and extreme insecurities. No. I breastfed my Bobby. Big mistake. Number three, drugging Hank. In the episode The Incredible Hank, Hank Hill finds out from his doctor that he has IMS. 
You have irritable male syndrome. IMS is similar to PMS and it stands for irritable male syndrome. His doctor prescribes testosterone, but Hank throws the medical prescription in the trash and storms off angrily with Bobby. Peggy Hill thinks Hank's doctor is giving her a sign to take the prescription from the trash can, and what does Peggy do? You guessed it, she takes the prescription from the trash and gives it to the pharmacist. Peggy slips it into Hank's food and drink without him knowing. Now we could argue that Peggy is doing this because she's worried about Hank and that she loves him, but in reality this is incredibly dangerous and foolish on Peggy's end. According to Hank's doctor, the amount of pills that Peggy gave to Hank has made him go through a second puberty. Well, that explains the constant hair combing and why he's hanging out at the mall all the time. Isn't going through puberty once enough? Also, Peggy may have shrunk Hank's testicles by 20%. Oh my god. This is just the kind of thing that upsets him. So not only did she drug Hank behind his back, she almost murdered Hank's special fellas. That is no way to treat your husband, Peggy. Shame on you. Number four, impersonating a nun. If you think Peggy secretly giving testosterone to Hank was bad, then get a load of this. Peggy wants to teach so badly that she tries to get a substitute teaching job at Tom Landry Middle School, but when all teaching spots are filled, Hank offers her a job at Strickland Propane. Hey, Peggy. How would you like to come to work with me at Strickland? But she would rather die than work there. If Peggy can't get a job teaching, then life isn't worth living according to her. So what does the desperate Peggy Hill do? Peggy lies to the Catholic Church and impersonates a nun. I am Sister Peggy Hill. In order for her to teach at the Catholic Church, you have to be a nun, and with the way Peggy Hill operates, you know she's gonna risk it all by accepting the job. And of course, she's way underqualified. She was supposed to teach transubstantiation to the class, but she has no idea what that is. Trans what now? And she even had to ask one of her students what it meant. Not only is she lying to herself and God, of course, but she's also putting the students at a great disadvantage in learning religious studies. So, what can I fill your little minds with? Those kids are supposed to be getting an education, Peggy. They don't have time for your narcissistic tendencies. You leave her alone! In fact, you might be going to hell, Peggy, and I hear the flames in that place are fueled by clean burning propane. <laughs> Number 5. Peggy the Dictator Is there no end to Peggy's chaos? Apparently not. In the episode Hanky Panky, Mr. Strickland's wife, Miss Liz, finds out that her husband is cheating on her, and decides enough is enough. I want you! Out of the house! Yeah, but three. And out of the lake house! Uh, she divorces him, and before Miss Liz can take half of everything, Mr. Strickland decides to give Hank and Peggy Hill the deed to a restaurant called Sugarfoot's. While Hank is dealing with the love spat of Mr. Strickland, Debbie Grund, and Miss Liz, Peggy decides to completely change the look of Sugarfoot's. This place has so many possibilities. She didn't like the sawdust on the floor. Ugh. Sawdust. The brisket served on butcher paper and the cozy feel to it. Trouble is afoot when Peggy destroys the charm of Sugarfoots and made it more corporate, bringing on dictator-esque policies. For example, she creates a suggestion box where only she can put suggestions in. She didn't even put a hole in the box. You know that box would work better if you cut a hole in the top. She doesn't care about the opinions from her employees. One of her suggestions was to get rid of the sawdust and put in carpet. Excuse me, Peggy, but sawdust on the floor is part of the charm. It's supposed to be laid back and chill. You don't see original Roadhouse Grill get rid of the peanuts on the floor. That's their thing. And sawdust on the floor is Sugarfoot's thing. How dare you ruin tradition, Peggy? It's like you don't even care about the restaurant and how people feel about it. It's all about you. What have they done to Sugarfoot? Sugarfoot. That's how some restaurants die. They get rid of what used to be good and try something completely new and jarring. The suggestion box isn't the only thing that Peggy does. She plasters her face on a moving train on a track and it says no substitutions. Damn, Peggy, you're so vain. But it's not all bad though. In the end, Buck and Miss Liz get back together and Buck regains ownership of Sugarfoots once more and removes all the changes that Peggy Hill made at the restaurant and it goes back to normal. Also, during the episode, Hank Hill was being framed for the murder of Debbie Grund by his snake in the grass boss, Mr. Strickland. All the gossip and lies went to Peggy's head and she believed that Hank had Hanky Panky with Debbie Grund. She got upset that Hank didn't tell her about Miss Liz making a pass on him and got really upset when she found out he was smoking pot. <gasps> Getting high? He said that? Peggy knows her husband very well, but when his character is in question, she tends to not be loyal. You know, Peggy, maybe there was a good reason why he was smoking pot, I tell you what. Maybe he was trying to dull the pain of being married to a big-footed narcissist. Who are you, 
Hank Hill? Or being made into the male mistress of Miss Liz. Of course, those aren't true. Hank smoked weed by accident because he thought it was a cigarette. <laughs> and the only mistress Hank Hill needs is Sweet Lady Propane. Number six, kidnapping a child. In the episode Lupe's Revenge, Peggy gets to take the Tom Landry Middle School Spanish Club on a field trip to Mexico. Bad idea? You bet. We all know that Peggy Hill sucks at teaching Spanish, and she's hurting her students' education with false knowledge of the language spoken in Mexico. Peggy sees nothing wrong with this idea and tells her husband Hank all about it. He says it's a bad idea because she isn't that fluent in the language, but Peggy, being the stubborn woman that she is, believes she can speak the language perfectly. In fact, I am so fluent that I may tutor a few Mexican kids while I'm down there. She also gets rid of a Spanish dictionary that Bobby had in his backpack. They all take the trip to Mexico and things get bad when Peggy has no idea where she's going and decides to stop at a place where she thinks a carnival is happening. But really, she followed a native Mexican to a butcher shop. All the kids play with the animals and think that the butcher killing the animals is a magic trick thanks to Peggy Hill. After a while, they decide to go back home, but a Mexican girl is standing next to the bus and Peggy thinks she's one of the students. The girl says that she isn't a student, but Peggy doesn't understand a lick of Spanish, so you know what happens next? That's right. Peggy unwittingly kidnaps a Mexican girl and brings her back to Texas. Not only could this whole situation have been avoided if Peggy learned proper Spanish, but she also committed a crime. She tries to mend the situation by taking Lupe back to Mexico, but thanks to her arrogance, she gets branded as a kidnapper and goes to jail. She gets lucky in the end because she reveals to the judge that her knowledge of the Spanish language is not very good and she didn't mean to kidnap Lupe. It was a complete accident. You would think that after this incident, Peggy would stop teaching Spanish at Tom Landry Middle School, but nope. She continues to be a detriment to her students' education. If I was going to take a class to learn Spanish, I would hope to God that I don't get Peggy Hill as a teacher. Number seven, creating chemical weapons. In the episode Bystand Me, Peggy gets a job at the Arlen Bystander writing a household hints column, but to Peggy's dismay, she can't come up with any helpful tips. She's not well versed in household hacks, and why should she be? She's book smart, not house smart, according to Peggy anyway. I am a thinker, a writer. When Peggy gets a coffee stain on her shirt, Min gives her advice on how to clean the spill. Soak stain in lime juice, dab gently, and quit your hollering. She tells Peggy to soak it in lime juice. Peggy comes to the conclusion that Min knows her stuff and asks her for tips for her column, and in exchange, she would provide the answers to the New Yorker crossword puzzle so she can cheat and beat Khan while they have their little battle of wits. Not only does Peggy take Min's ideas and use them as her own, she's lying about her knowledge and household hints when she could have told her boss that she's not very good at it. You're Peggy Hill. I recognize you from your picture. If she did, maybe her boss could have given her a different task. But the huge problem arises when Min stops giving her ideas because her mother-in-law stops trading ideas with her. No more tips. Peggy is so desperate that she makes up household hints on the spot. Okay, I need a hint. A way to make something wider or fresher. And accidentally tells Arlen to mix ammonia and bleach, which is mustard gas. Arlen will be covered with a cloud of poison. Good God, Peggy. Peggy's desperation and lies could have very easily led to the death and destruction of people in Arlen. I say almost because Hank Hill caught wind of Peggy's blunder and, as usual, fixed the problem. Let's be real, Hank truly is too good for her. With the help of a crew, they managed to steal all the newspapers in the neighborhood so nobody got to read Peggy's quote-unquote helpful hint. And the town wasn't destroyed by mustard gas. And let's be real, in this town, the only gas that should be peddled is that sweet propane. Number eight, almost manslaughter. In the episode Peggy's Fanfare, the Hill family goes on a church retreat to Fanfare, which seems to be a country western music convention. It's revealed during the episode that Peggy has sent her lyrics to many country music stars and gets a letter back from Randy Travis. In the letter, it states that Randy won't be using her songs, but tells Peggy good luck on her songwriting career. Good luck with your songwriting career. Fast forward to the fanfare. To her horror, she hears a song on the speakers and it turns out to be Peggy's lyrics. She knows that Randy stole her lyrics and made it into his own song. She gets so angry that she punches Randy Travis square in the face and he falls to the floor, which is actually a pretty savage moment. You stole my song! 
It's good that she's standing up for herself, but punching someone for stealing your lyrics is not the answer. But the real kicker is, she then goes on to TP Randy's trailer with the help of Boomhauer and Bill, but during the toilet paper skirmish, Bill accidentally knocks the block off near the wheel which was acting as a brake. The trailer is tipped into the lake with Randy Travis still inside. Whoops. Peggy didn't know that Randy was still inside his trailer, but in her defense, it was a complete accident. Don't worry though, Peggy is not a murderer. Hank swooped in and saved the day by jumping in the lake and saving Randy Travis from drowning. God dang, Hank Hill is like a superhero. Number 9. Taking Advantage of Bill In the episode Bill of Sales, Peggy is looking for another job. While she's pursuing the classifieds, she stumbles onto an ad that's calling for salesmen. A natural born leader who can build business from zero to infinity. Peggy takes the job and finds out that she has to sell Metalife products, such as Metalife bars, protein shakes, and vitamins. It turns out that Metalife is a pyramid scheme, and Peggy doesn't care. She's so desperate to work again that she'll do anything to get ahead, including manipulating Bill into helping her sell Metalife products. During the episode, Bill accepts the Metal Life packages from the delivery man and signs for it just so he can have a chance to bring it to Peggy and talk to her. Which is sad. Bill does these kinds of things all throughout the show because he loves Peggy. And his infatuation does get weird on and off. But Bill is lonely and depressed, and using him is still very wrong. Bill doesn't deserve to be treated like dirt. Lazy, good for nothing, quitter! In the end of the episode, Peggy sees the error in her ways when she sees Bill is hurting from lifting the Metal Life boxes onto his car. I mean, his toe is even bleeding because he has a serious blister. Peggy fires Bill from selling Metal Life products and tells him she doesn't feel right taking advantage of a friend. Bill. Yeah. Bill, you're fired. They reconcile their differences and everything is right again, except for the Metal Life products they haven't sold yet. Number 10. Spreading Poison In the episode, I never promised you an organic garden. Organic garden? What organic garden? Peggy learns that Tom Landry Middle School's organic garden is in danger of closing because the gardener in charge is retiring. If the organic garden doesn't get a new teacher soon, the football coach plans to use the garden as space for the football team's equipment. Peggy jumps on the opportunity and asks Principal Moss for the gardening position. Moss reluctantly says yes, and Peggy is thrilled. The organic garden under Peggy Hill's care does okay for a while, but then bugs start to terrorize the entire garden. Why did I promise them a field of greens? Die! All the fruits and veggies become rotten, and the food is intolerable for the football players. What the hell happened to this carrot, son? So Principal Moss gives Peggy Hill and the organic garden crew a week to improve. Coach, I don't feel so... Oh. One week. Unfortunately, Peggy caves into the pressure... I tried every organic trick in the book. ...and learns from the previous gardener in charge. Eh... How about methyl isothiocyanate? That he uses chemicals to make the garden perfect and free from pests. So what does Peggy do? She secretly uses pesticides in the school's organic garden and endangers people's lives. She knows the veggies and fruits are for the football team, but in her illogical thinking and desperation, she throws caution to the wind and ignores the health of the football team, including her, Hank, Bobby, and the rest of the gardeners. Hank, no, no, it's for the football team. And don't touch your eyes. Not only is what Peggy is doing dangerous, it's also completely illegal. What is she thinking? People can get seriously ill from eating poisonous foods, and Peggy would probably go to jail. Another example of Peggy Hill's narcissism and insecurities getting the best of her. But what do you think? What's the worst thing that Peggy Hill has done in your opinion? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. But most importantly, stay wicked.